The BMW 3 Series is one of the most popular cars in the country. In fact, it was the most popular plug-in hybrid of 2021. It's easy to see why. They're great to drive, fancy interior tech, and a lovely quality cabin. But what about the idea of a pure electric 3 Series? Well, you can count us in for one. Okay, technically this is a pure electric 4 Series. This is the BMW i4 and it gives us a pretty decent look at what the forthcoming BMW i3 will offer. Hold on, isn't the i3 a quirky, urban-focused EV? Not a 300-mile electric saloon, we hear you say? Well, yes, but the existing i3 isn't set to be replaced, at least not in its current capacity. Instead, the i3 is a name likely to be given to the electric 3 Series, a car that won't look all that dissimilar to the plug-in hybrid 330e. But let's park that for now. We'll take a deeper look at the i3 when it lands in the UK at a later date. But for now, i4. It's effectively modelled on a 4 Series Grand Coupe and it gets much of the same styling elements. It's very similar front end, the same swept back profile and crucially, the same hatchback tailgate. But we'll come back to practicality in a minute. In here, the i4 betrays its roots, and instead of lifting its dashboard from the petrol-powered 4 Series, it takes greater inspiration from the flagship iX. So instead of having a traditional instrument binnacle here, you get these two screens, 14.9 inches in the middle and 12.3 inches here, gently curved in the middle. Now this one here in the centre is running BMW's new iDrive 8 software, and, well, it's not as good as the old system. I don't mean in terms of functionality, there's plenty of that, there's loads and loads of menus, but in terms of how you use it and how intuitive it is to use. We've long loved BMW's iDrive system, the click wheel down here on the centre console, all the intuitive menus, but that's not the case anymore. It's just overcomplicated. there's too much stuff buried in that screen, and the same goes for these digital dials. They look great, but there's too much going on, and they're just not that simple to navigate. You do still get the click wheel down here and the screen is all touch operated. So I'm sure if you were prepared to play patiently, then you would get the hang of it. But before you could just get in a BMW and it would feel instantly familiar. You'd know where everything was and you would know how everything works. And that's just not the case anymore. But let's not let that take away from the fact that the screen graphics are super sharp. The resolution is fantastic and it just feels really upmarket. But let's be frank, at least BMW still thinks it's appropriate to fit little switches down here to adjust the mirrors. And there's another one for the lights. You can't say the same about a Tesla Model 3. Overall though, the i4 just feels so special. And that's only helped by this low slung driving position and these contoured sports seats. BMW interiors have always had a, a feel of sophistication. The i4, it just smashes it out of the park. Another area where the i4 impresses is when it comes to range and charging. No matter which model you go for, every i4 gets an 80.7 kWh usable battery. In the eDrive 40, which we have here, that translates to an official range of 365 miles, dropping to 318 miles in the flagship M50. During our time with the car, however, we've been seeing between 3 and 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour, roughly 240 to 260 miles in normal driving. As we film this though, the temperatures are hovering around 5 to 7 degrees. We expect those numbers to improve in the warmer months. Still, every model gets 205 kilowatt rapid charging as standard, meaning you can add 100 odd miles in 10 minutes, or a 10 to 80% charge in 31 minutes. Topping up at home via a 7 kilowatt wall box takes around 13 hours, but the i4 can charge using 11 kilowatt three phase electricity should you have the means to do so. So what's this i4 like to drive? Well, it's got a lot to live up to given the fact that the 3 Series has absolutely dominated this area of the market for what, four decades? Even the original i3 proved that with the right ingredients, an electric car could be both fun to drive and frugal. But the i4 isn't a bespoke EV like the i3 was. It's a petrol car that's been made electric. It's one that's had its engine ripped out and a motor dropped in. Okay, it's not quite as simple as that, but BMW certainly hasn't made things easy. And yet the way this thing handles is nothing short of a marvel. It may not be as neck snappingly quick as some of the fastest Teslas, but show this thing a few corners and a Model 3 wouldn't know which way you went. Nothing this side of a Porsche Taycan handles with such precision. The steering is perhaps a little short on communication, but you're always absolutely certain that the car will go just where you want it to. And that is on 
greasy winter cold roads in this rear wheel drive e-drive 40 model go for the m50 and you get the added reassurance of all-wheel drive and yet you don't need to spend the extra 10 grand 335 horsepower is plenty and given the fact that all of that power and torque is available in an instant it feels quite a bit quicker than the numbers suggest 0 to 62 miles an hour in this car takes 5.7 seconds in the m50 sub 4 and yet the most impressive thing in my opinion is that the i4 can do all of this and then when you're not driving like the seat of your pants is on fire it can dial things back and turn into a really relaxed cruiser certainly more so than a polestar 2 even with that car's optional multi-way adjustable dampers the i4 is quiet it's refined more so than a 3 series due to the complete lack of background engine drone there is a little bit of noise from the tires but it's nothing major if you're considering an i4 then you'll be pleased to know that choosing one is relatively straightforward there are two models to pick from the e-drive 40 and the m50 the latter is a standalone model the first pure electric m car the former can be specced in familiar sport and m sport trims it's the very cheapest sport model that we would go for led lights alloy wheels climate control and those gorgeous twin screens m sport cars like ours get more aggressive styling and some different trim on the inside while the m50 costs around 10 grand more and adds a bit more substance with the different suspension steering and brakes plus that extra motor for over 500 brake horsepower we promise you practicality and we will keep our word electric tailgate standard across the range but most importantly it's hinged from the top unlike the tesla model 3 so that works wonders when shoving stuff in the back granted that sloping roof line doesn't mean it's the most practical electric car but 470 litres is a decent space and it's only 10 litres down on the petrol powered 4 series Grand Coupe. Frustratingly though there isn't really much in the way of underfloor storage especially as this one's got a Harman Kardon stereo subwoofer thing hidden under the floor. Even more annoying though there's no space in the nose like you would get in a Tesla Model 3 or a Polestar 2 so you're going to have to keep the cables alongside your luggage. That sloping roofline mostly makes itself known in the rear where you'll find headroom limited for those like me who are six foot or more. There's a conventional transmission tunnel too, even though it serves no purpose, so it's no better in the middle seat either. Want to carry passengers in the back on a regular basis? Try an iX3 for size. But really all of that pales into insignificance if like most new car buyers, you plan to mainly drive your car. And for that, there really is nothing better. Yes, a Porsche Taycan may be a few degrees sharper, but it's also at least 20 grand more expensive and it's no more practical and it's barely any more luxurious. The BMW i4 is an exceptional driver's car, but it's just a really lovely car to live with day to day. It's gonna be really popular with company car drivers thanks to its low running costs and its long range. It's a viable alternative to those plug-in hybrid cars that are so popular in this area of the market. BMW is grabbing the bull by its horns, and dare I say it, it's probably the single manufacturer closest to beating Tesla at this EV game. Head to drivingelectric.com for all the latest electric and hybrid car advice, news and reviews, and check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Finally, while you're here, make sure you hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and turn on notifications to ensure you never miss a video.